Coming up, we talk about the first photos and trailer from Saving Mr. Banks. My Magic Plus bands are proving to be successful early on. Disney World is pushing to save money on personal injury lawsuits. And one man apparently stole several identities to fund 17 Disney vacations. All that, plus our first installment of Beyond the Parks. This week, we talk about Disney's Alani. And we have a contest where you have a chance to win a six-day, five-night stay at Disney's Alani. Coming up. This is the Diz Unplugged episode 628 for the week of July 16, 2013. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney World, Disneyland, and Disney Cruise Line vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. You forgot ABD. And Adventures by Disney and Disney's Alani as well. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> well, hello and welcome to the Diz Unplugged. Uh, coming to you from the Bob Varley studio here in Orlando, Florida. I am your host, Dustin West, joined at the table this week by John Magi, Kevin Close, Sean Thompson, Corey Martin, and back in the production nook is our associate producer, Craig Williams. Well, again, I'm Dustin West, and I am uh, filling in this week for uh, Pete Werner, who's our normal host. Of course, he's uh, taking some uh, personal time, um, and just want to say, I think, uh, especially with the Solani show and the Beyond the Parks, you know, we're really missing him here at the table today, and I think everybody can agree with that. So we're going to do our best without him, um, and uh, hope he comes back soon. Yeah. I do want to say, you know, most people who don't know, um, his health is okay. This is just personal reasons, so, you know, never say never. He could be coming back. We just don't know when, but never say never. That's right. As Justin Bieber said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never I wasn't going with that. <laughs> yeah. that that's, uh, that's a Sean thing. Justin Bieber, huh? No. Uh, you, oh, you don't it like... You He's not telling the truth. <laughs> He's number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, thanks for, uh, for that, Corey. Um, we have an interesting show today. Of course, like I said, our, our next segment is going to be the uh, Beyond the Parks Alani show, and we have a really cool contest coming up. But before that, we do have a lot of cool stuff in this episode with the news and rapid fire and everything. Uh, but first, I want to get started with some housekeeping. If anybody has anything, I've got a few things, but if anybody else. I want to congratulate uh, Craig on getting the date and the episode number right this week. <laughs> Great, Craig. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Good job. I want to say, too, uh, we've been hinting and inferring about Podcast Cruise 5.0 and a possible date. Folks, we don't have a date set. Please stop emailing Tracy Heinrichs to change your dates. She's kind of sent me an email, and she's a little frustrated at the moment. We don't know the date. We talked about what we thought it was going to be. Just hang on for a couple more weeks until we get it all set. I know everybody's very anxious to book, but you know, if you change your date now to a date that it's not going to be, we're all just going to be doing double work. So, so email John instead. Right, right. You can email right. me, yeah. and I'll you know, talk you off the ledge. <laughs> <laughs> Take a breath. All right. I wanted to say real quick, uh, happy ninth anniversary to my wife. Today is our ninth anniversary. Oh, yeah, happy, happy anniversary. anniversary. So. Love you, Julie, if you're watching. If you're not, still love you. Nine <laughs> years married. Seven wow. happy ones. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. I'm oh, sorry. Didn't little... care much for year four. got <laughs> 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 a little squirrely. That was a little was weird. Yeah. Tri-wizarding competition was starting there. It was a weird year. <laughs> wait, wait, not a Terry Potter. I'm sorry. Bizarre reference. Congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations. Lots of happy anniversaries in chat. Oh, I'll see you. Nice. On that yeah. Thank you, everybody. Very good. Anybody else have any uh, housekeeping? Kevin, you want to talk about your bag? <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> Kevin had a bag emergency on the way over. Remember when you said, Kevin, do you want to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> and he said no. Well, I want to talk about it. <laughs> Go Look, ahead. Sorry, Move yeah. along. Yeah. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Keep going. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I just wanted to, uh, as we talk about every week, uh, some of our Give Kids the World's meets, uh, meets that are happening across the country. Um, right now, we do have uh, the Nova Scotia meet is happening on the weekend of August 11th. We have uh, Indianapolis meet the weekend of September 7th. And the Delaware meet for Give Kids the World is happening the weekend of November the 1st. Um, so 
definitely go to the Diz boards, especially the Diz Unplugged uh, board. You find all the information for our different meets across the country. And if you want to start one yourself, that's a great place to start. Find support. Um, see what other people have been doing at their meets mm-hmm. and trying to get something get yeah. something going for Give Kids the World. They've been a lot of fun, and we've raised a lot of money in the uh, this particular kind of Power of Ten Give Kids the World meet. There thing. are a lot of meets to choose from. I feel like I'm at Texas de Brazil. <laughs> a lot of <laughs> wow. <laughs> Have you been drinking? <laughs> you really? I don't know, man. <laughs> I just woke up on the right side of the bed. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Uh, also in housekeeping, I do want to mention, of course, uh, the Disneyland show, the Disneyland version of the Diz Unplugged. Go to DizUnplugged.com. Every Thursday they have new episodes. So check out the Disneyland version of DizUnplugged.com. And one last thing for me in housekeeping, uh, Nikki Mancini, who was here uh, last week talking about uh, interesting items and that you can find at Disney World, has a, a blog coming out. Um, so you want to go to the uh, the Diz blog. That's blog wdwinfo.com she's talking about the uh, chameleon jewelry those are the the jewelry pieces that are interchangeable that they're selling at disney now so you definitely want to check out check out that blog coming up i do have a quick thing i'm going to do a quick bit about abd okay sure for our trips next year we have february 17th it's president's week uh we're going to backstage magic there are spaces left available on that trip there's a May trip on May 25th through June 1st. It's the Ireland trip. If you're thinking about it, it's really great because it takes in uh, Memorial Day. So you only have to take four days of vacation for that trip. And we have a July trip to Backstage, Backstage Magic. Magic. Yeah. That has a couple of seats left on it. There's not many. I can do about four more people. We have a December trip that's sold out. And we are hinting at a European trip in September, but we don't have dates. If you're interested in any of these except the sep- December trip, and all I can do is put you on a wait list, is send me an email at Kevin at Dreams Unlimited Travel dot com. Okay. Very good. I have a quick thing for housekeeping. I want to yeah. say thank you to uh, Ian Glaubinger who sent us an awesome package of all these uh, cool prints, and it was like. Black Friday here in Pete's yeah, dining, table, dining room <laughs> table because as soon as we found out they were there, we all ran up and chose what we wanted. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to him. Um, and his website is hasyounow.com, H-A-S-U-N-O-W.com. So go check out his stuff. He's really Truly awesome. He's a great artist. Thank oh, yeah. you, Ian. Yes, thank, thank you. you, Ian. Yeah. Very cool. Anybody else? Craig? Um, make no. sure if you haven't yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we have lots of, well, POVs. All of our podcasts go up on there. Park benches, best place to watch them at. We have a playlist with 63 of them. Oof. So that's hours and hours of park benches that you can just watch right in a row. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, yeah, go ahead and sign up. It'll let you know every time something new comes in, and you'll be the first to know. So go ahead and do that. Very good. Yeah, please awesome. subscribe to YouTube on the Diz. www.youtube.com slash user slash info. <laughs> That was complicated. It was. Hashtag. I don't think you need to. Forward slash. <laughs> cola. Or you can go, go pretty much anywhere on our website. Honestly, and that you find the icon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That too. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thanks, everybody. I um, think it's about time we can move right along to the news. All right. Busy news week. We got four stories this week. I'm excited. <clears throat> Excuse me. Boy, I got all choked up over the first one. <laughs> First official still and trailer from Saving Mr. Banks features Tom Hanks as Walt Disney. In the first official still from the film, Saving Mr. Banks, Tom Hanks suits up and sports a mustache to portray the legendary Walt Disney. A three-minute trailer for the film has also been released and can be seen on the website ontheredcarpet.com. The film tells the story of Disney's quest to make the classic 1964 Mary Poppins movie that starred Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke. In the still, Mr. Hanks and Walt, as Walt Disney shows author P.L. Travers, played by Emma Thompson, around Disneyland in Anaheim, California. When Disney's daughters begged him to make a movie of their favorite book, Travers' Mary Poppins, he promised to deliver. It took him 20 years to obtain the rights, and when he did, he was forced to deal with a curmudgeonly uncompromising author quote she's the most difficult person i've ever had to play thompson 54 said directed by john lee hancock hang 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 <laughs> directed by john lee hancock old john hancock let's cut that out okay yeah sure the film also <laughs> takes it the film also stars colin farrell rachel griffiths 
Paul Giamatti, Jason <laughs> Schwartzman, and B.J. Novak. Uh, the film is set to be released nationwide on December 20th, 2013. Now, uh, Jason Schwartzman and um, B.J. Novak are playing the uh, Sherman Brothers, yeah. which if you see the trailer, you got to see the trailer. It looks awesome. Anybody, this movie's did you guys watch it? Did you watch the trailer? Oh, yeah, many times. Yeah. Did you see the outside of the studios? Uh-huh. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? Having been there now and seeing those. Everything looks so good about this movie. Uh, Michael Bowling posted on Facebook that there are probably some historical inaccuracies about it. I would it. imagine. But at the same time, it just looks so good. And I think the point is that, you know, it's a... Oh, my God. They shot it's just an Disneyland. enjoyable story. I know. It looks amazing. It does. Yeah. And it's a dramatization. It's yeah, not, of course. You know, yeah. I mean, it's not going to be historically accurate, but it's not a documentary. But but. In the trailer, Tom Hanks is portraying uh, Disney. And, of course, in the script, it's very, like... Happy go lucky, like almost like a prankster. Ooh, that's <laughs> historically inaccurate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. But um, and he's kind of got a southern accent going. It looks it looks really great. Um, and I think this is one of the most interesting stories. I mean, unless they did like a full Walt Disney like biography movie, or uh, let Meryl Streep do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Meryl Streep as Walt Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think this is a really interesting story in uh, in his life and, and the Disney history of getting Mary Poppins together. I, I think there's just so many interesting stories. And the cast is fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah cast is great. Yeah. And it's set for release right before Christmas. This is going to be a big hit. It is. This will be a huge hit for Disney. They've been, uh, I mean, there have been speculation about like a Walt uh, Disney biopic for years and like, who was going to play him? You know, there's been pictures online of what was it Ryan Gosling? I think Daniel Craig should play him. Daniel Craig, mm, I think so. But it's or cool. Meryl Streep. Tom Hanks is one of my favorite actors, so I know. No, he'll do a great job. Yeah, yeah. In anything he's he plays, he'll he does a great job. Excellent. All right, we're all looking forward to that. Apparently, yeah. All right, our second. Just before we go on, <laughs> P.L. Travers hated Mary Poppins. Hated the movie. I hated the movie, yeah. For would sure. not let him do any of her other books, would not let him do a sequel to it. She hated it. She said it was too happy go lucky. The original book is much darker. Dustin, you mentioned where the title comes from. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, they kind of had to explain it in the uh, trailer. Saving Mr. Banks, Mr. Banks being the character of the father in Mary Poppins. Um, so the trailer explains that she's trying to tell Walt Disney what this story is really about. And it's about the father, the lack of the father figure with the kids. And, well, it's based and, on her father. Yeah. P.L. Travers wrote it and Mr. Banks is... Her father. Yeah, and they, yeah. they talk about that in the trailer, too. Mm. But Walt Disney kind of thinks that the point of Mary Poppins is to come and help the children and right. save them. But she says, in fact, that it's kind of more about saving the father. So, Yeah, so that's where the uh, title comes from, if you didn't realize that. Excellent. Yeah. All right, our second news story. Wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> Let's one talk more about his mustache. <laughs> <laughs> is it real? You're all boring me. I'm going on to the second news story. My Magic Plus Bands... My Magic Plus bands at Walt Disney World in Florida showed increased guest spending. I didn't know what that was a picture of. I like that hand model. (laughs) I know that freckle. (laughs) (laughs) Electronic wristbands tested at the Walt Disney World theme park in Florida have proven to lead to spending increases by visitors, Walt Disney Parks Parks and Unit Chairman Tom Stagg said last Thursday. Average guest spending rose partly because people had fun with the technology, dubbed My Magic Plus, he told Bloomberg News. He didn't spe- specify how much of a boost to spending they provided. Staggs added that Disney plans to run additional trials of the bands before rolling them out throughout Walt Disney World by the year end. We're still in test mode, he said. It takes time to get it all rolled out. The wristbands, tested by 1,000 people so far, function as theme park admission tickets and hotel room keys as well as credit cards and uh, as well as credit cards as users can pay by waving them in front of sensors. They also help reduce the time visitors spend in line by allowing to book rides and restaurant seats in advance. Plus they allow guests to book meet and greets with Disney characters. Um, the My Magic Plus trial is in the company's next step after its FastPass Plus program. Staggs is one of the two internal candidates to become CEO of Disney when current boss Rob Iger steps down. I can definitely see it doing that. We just, you know, for example, this past weekend, we did a little staycation and stayed at the Contemporary Resort. And, you know, just by having that room key and easy access to using the room key and swiping it down and paying for stuff with such ease. And then you get the, the folio at the end of your stay going, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like at the cruise, right. you know, you, you, say, it's last is, day shock. Yeah. But, you know, this being... 
just even easier than that. It's just okay. Go ahead. Well, couldn't you do it. the same thing with your card before? Yeah, but now it's permanently well, yeah. attached to your body. Yeah, but the the room key is you know so you, you don't you, have to sign anything. You just you, you slap it on there. You press in your pin, and then that's it. You don't have to sign, and I don't know. It's just one step easier. They've succeeded in doing what they thought they were going to do, which is get guests to spend more money. Whether it's because it's fun and I get to hold my wrist up and the Mickey green light goes on or whatever it is. I mean, this is what they've wanted. And even with the room key, like, <coughs> I don't have to pull out my wallet. I'll just keep the room key in my pocket and just pull it right out with whatever. Yeah. Not having to pull out my actual <coughs> yeah, I mean, credit card out. It makes sense. People aren't aren't thinking about having to pay real money until the end of their vacation. So they're... Just racking up a and bill. And even with the wristband, it becomes less real. It's kind of like using chips in a casino. Right. You know, this is a, if you take a room key, it feels like a credit card. You turn the lights on and see that thing under the door. Oh, crap. What did right. I do? On the cruises, usually they can't slip it under our door. We have to go and get it because it's like a book. <laughs> but you know what? Everyone has said all, to, all along, how are they going to pay for this? This is going to be expensive. They're smart. They know they're going to pay for it and increase sales and guest spending. So I don't yeah. think that's an issue. All right. And our third news story, Walt Disney World and Publix push to pay less when injured customers sue. The Orlando Sentinel reports that Walt Disney World Resort and supermarket chain Publix are pushing for legislation that would limit the money awarded to individuals for medical expenses in civil lawsuits against Florida businesses. Lobbyists for the proposal argue that because of the complicated way in which doctors bill and are paid for their services... In such cases, they're higher than they should be. Opponents claim the co- uh, corporations are simply trying to dump the financial burden on innocent victims. This is all according to the Orlando Sentinel. Disney World and its sister park, Disneyland, have long histories of being sued by their guests over a variety of injuries, including inc- incidences that allegedly occurred on their many rides. Meanwhile, Publix estimates that if the Florida law passed, it could save $1 million from the $37 million it paid last year in settlements and legal costs related to personal injury lawsuits. Publix and Disney declined to answer specific questions about the proposal from the Orlando Sentinel, except to say that they backed the legislation. Um, and pretty much that's just yeah. the rest of it's just more of going on about that. This is, you know, businesses are going to do this. This is what they want to do. They want to limit their liability and limit their risk when people sue. Huh. Excellent. <laughs> I mean, what, what do you, you know? What do you say? Yeah, what do you say? Well, to is it, what do you guys think? Do you think it's right for them to put limits on it? Or do you think that it's okay for them to want to not have to pay out more money? Uh, I mean, the first thing I thought whenever I read this story was I wish I would have been, like, fallen in Publix for the past year or two. Really? $37 million? Yeah, 30. Who knew they were that dangerous? Kevin actually yeah. fell in Publix once, and we didn't sue. Nope. I did. Yep, hurt his knee. But I think that part of it is it's not necessarily saying we want to not pay out these claims. What they're saying is let's be a little bit more fair. Right. What happens is you go to a doctor and a doctor says, well, you know, you've got whatever injury you have. Um, Bills could be X amount of dollars, but what they wind up actually getting from an insurance company and then getting from the person in part of the claim could wind up being a lot less. And all the company is saying is let's base our settlement on what someone would get from the injury rather than what a doctor should do that with a utility company. I think we should tell them that we only want to pay a certain amount. And think of how much that would save us. <laughs> oh God. Especially this last month. Right. Yeah, I don't find anything wrong with uh, with capping it out. You know, I mean, if people do, people are going to take advantage. You know, oh, my neck. Oh, my neck and my back. Oh, now my ankle. <laughs> oh. <It's- laughs> I didn't know where you were going with that, man. <laughs> yeah, but what if somebody's really hurt? That's a quote from Friday. Well, yeah. My neck, got, yeah, my neck think, and my back. I think you've got a, a case where you want... You want people to look at the facts of the of what happens, and it can't be about you know speculation about what something might cost, and they talk about what it does cost. Do they really pay out on speculation? I think my back is hurt. I mean, don't you have to have a doctor's approval? Oh, right. right. You have to go to a chiropractor eight times a week and right. show I records. I mean, you have and... to have some sort of basis. In fact, I think the fact that they're limiting it is they're telling you that your uh, injuries are only worth so much. Right. Well, the example the example they use in here is that Disneyland paid out eight thousand dollars after a disabled man was stranded on It's a Small World. You know, um, so I mean, those things 
add up. I mean, that's a, to me personally, that seems like a large amount of money, but it's coming from a settlement, I would assume. That's also not. one of the ones that's really hard to put a value on mm-hmm. because you're talking about emotional, right. well, there's also psychological else distress. In that. This man was um, disabled. So there was no way for him to get out. Right, right. So right. it's really without opening up this huge can right. of worms about you know accessibility and things like that. I think that one's a really difficult one yeah. to use as a gauge. It's the you know it's not the merits of the suit. It's you know the cash value of what it's actually worth. You know I think the person should have got more. Okay. For sitting on Small World. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and our final news story. All right. Police say man stole IDs to fund 17 Disney vacations. Alexander Pira, a Lincolnshire, Illinois, of Lincolnshire, Illinois, was, a la- was arrested last week and charged with stealing the identities of 50 customers and former employees of the restaurant where he worked to finance trips to the Walt Disney Resort, Resort in Florida. The Lincolnshire Police Department said he used fraudulent obtained gift cards, cash, and prepaid credit cards worth $50,000 to pay for two Disney cruises and 15 Disney trips over five months. Police say 26-year-old Para used fake names, addresses, phone numbers, and email addresses to conceal his real identity to make the reservations and get away with so many trips. It wasn't his first brush with the law, according to a spokeswoman for Florida's Orange County Sheriff's Office, where Walt Disney World is located. A warrant for Perra's arrest was issued in 2009 on charges of fraudulent use of credit cards and theft. The charges were later dropped. Hmm. Um, This is my favorite line of the whole story. Perra told police that he went to Disney to get away from everything. He liked to walk around and dine in the park. He's in custody since July 3rd at the county jail on set of $500,000. Wow. That one didn't win the police over? It is really hard work stealing people's identities. You've got to get away. Yeah. Uh, I need a vacation to, need from a vacation. all this stealing identity. Mr. Perry, you've stolen people's IDs. What's next? Um, I'm going to Disney World. I just can't imagine 17 trips in five months. Like, how I, I, You know, we do it for a living and we can't get that many. <laughs> right. No, that's... I mean, he's going down every weekend, I, I imagine. This that's is a special uh, kind of stupid. This reminds me of when we were in Canada. It's a, I believe it's a nationwide thing in Canada. When you're at a restaurant, they have to, they swipe your card right in front of you. You yeah, know, that was they shocking when we were up there. That's in Europe they bring too, yeah. And I think, that, I mean, this guy worked at a restaurant, and you're handing over your, your credit card, and you know, we've, he's walking we, away to the back room. I think with we've it. all seen stories too where it's, people have even gotten away, gotten um, smart with that, and that thieves have the dual scanner. Mm-hmm. So they actually have the scanner in front of you where they swipe it and it's stealing your credit card information right at that spot. So if someone wants your information, they're going to get it. They're going to find a way to steal it, whether it's taking the credit card in the back room or not. But Yeah, it happened to me recently. I was going through the, our bank statement. And I saw a bunch of uh, charges in Canada at gas stations. I even called them up. I said, what do you guys sell? <laughs> He's like, petroleum, gas, you know? Yeah. Like, okay, well, my car got compromised. I had to shut it down. Right. I still had it in my possession. But. Yeah. And who knows where it happened? You yeah. know, it could have happened online. It could have happened. At a well, there was a story about the gas station the um, near Disney on Sand Lake Road that somebody had put in. I don't know the exact term for it, but it's a copier or a duplicator. The card and swiper it, was right, duplicated. It stuck, yeah. They stuck it in the actual card where you slide your credit card. Mm-hmm. And they had put one in there. It was thin enough. It fit in there. And they were copying everybody's credit card. This was a couple mm-hmm. of years ago. Wow. I used to work with a man, and we used to take, we dealt with credit cards. And one day the police showed up, and he had ordered pizza using someone else's credit card and had it delivered to his office. <laughs> so they, like, followed him. <laughs> I, yeah, I like the audacity of it. Yeah. Right? I like, it's like, you know, not No even, one will know. This was really over the top, this particular, 17 vacations. Yeah. And you would think, like, well, maybe you would mix it up and once go to Universal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, <before laughs> Universal. <laughs> Throw them off my trail. Gatorland. Yeah, you'll never get me. The word for that is a skimmer. Mm. Correct. Okay. Very good. I'm glad the oh. Chatterati had. It's had just a very legal. over the top, blatant crime, and he had excessive. No ex- really? Yeah, it's it, excessive spending. Yeah. Think about it too. You think about okay. It, it seems silly that he did all this in five months, but when people check their credit card statements, people probably didn't notice something was wrong yeah. for a couple yeah. of months. Mm-hmm. So he probably did it all quickly, knowing that's when he was going to get away with it. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Well, you had a crazy seven, uh, five months there. A lot of fun, I'm sure. 
A lot of was he by himself? I have no idea. Uh, what was he doing? <laughs> he was we getting away from himself. everything and everyone. <laughs> yeah. Did he have a buying account or Instagram? <laughs> Did he tweet while he was here? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he checked in. All right. That'll do it for the news this week. Cool. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. We are going to move on to Roundtable Rapid Fire. We have some good stuff. Let's see. Let's start with John. All right. In keeping with the spirit of our Alani show, just out, Disney has announced a special for Alani Resort and Spa. Five nights for the price of four, plus a $100 resort credit. Uh, This discount is available for stays most nights, September 26th through November 23rd, or December 1st through December 15th of this year. Book a minimum five-night stay. Get the fifth night free. Uh, also receive a $100 resort credit to spend on meals, recreation, and entertainment. Um, there's a discount code available, or you can go to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com, and we will gladly provide you with a quote. I also want to add, too, that Dreams Unlimited Travel provides a free gift for uh, all of our clients who book an Alani stay with us. Okay. And Sean actually has a visual of what we're giving folks. If you want to hold up what you have, the cup, the Alani cup. This? Yep. We're giving a refillable resort mug to oh. for everybody in your party. If you book an Alani vacation with us, doesn't matter on the length of stay or not. <laughs> Keep doing spokes model. He is a hand there. model. You know, he, he, he modeled the magic band. Shiv- he still Shiv- has Shiv- a magic band, 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 band tan <laughs> line. It's embarrassing. Show them your, your freckle. <laughs> Show them your freckle. The freckle's over here. Yeah, it's hard. Oh, so, and I think that's pretty cool. That'll save you some money, too, when you get to the resort. Those are the refillable mugs that are available at the resort for oh, yeah. sodas and coffee and things like that. So, uh, $100 resort credit, five nights with the price of four. And if you book through Dreams, you get a gift. Very cool. And, I mean, that's a that's a great deal for the price of four. Yeah, Especially because it's an expensive vacation. It is. All things considered, when you put in airfare and you put in the cost of the resort, this can be an expensive vacation. So it's always nice to have a way to... And those are for the, uh, the hotel rooms, right? Not the DVC, uh, I would assume. Uh, must be booked by September 3rd, 2013. Ocean View Rooms, Ocean View Villas, Suites, and Three Bedroom Grants Villas are not included. Okay. So, pretty much you have to stay with the janitor, is what it looks <laughs> Mountain like. Mountain View Rooms. Those are nice rooms, though. They're actually really nice rooms. Yeah. There's plenty of other options besides those to choose from. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, John. You're welcome. Kevin? Uh, the Carthay Circle Restaurant at Disney or Disney's California Adventure is offering a World of Color dining package. Mm. That includes preferred seating, uh, a preferred, (coughs) it includes a preferred reserved view for the show. Cost is $39 per adult for lunch and $59 per adult for dinner. Children are $18 for lunch and $20 for dinner. Reservations are recommended. If you want to hear a sample menu, your starters would include a choice of Carthay green salad or seasonal soup. And entrees include a choice of sautéed short rib raviolis, rigatoni with roasted chicken, summer vegetable rat- risotto, schooner bay salmon, <laughs> sautéed shrimp, grilled Angus ribeye, and western cut pork chop. Your dessert includes a choice of toasted lemon pound cake. That sounds kind of cheap. <laughs> or cord- cordillera chocolate decadent layer cake. I would go with that. Yeah. We did one of these dining packages uh, when we went out there. We ate at the Little Mermaid restaurant. Yeah, whatever that Under is. the sea. Beyond Ariel's the sea. Grotto. Ariel's Grotto. And while the food wasn't excellent, <laughs> wow. gadgets and gizmos are plenty. <laughs> <laughs> and while the food wasn't excellent, it was very good. We enjoyed our meal, but having the seating in advance of World of Color is a huge plus. Yeah, it is a madhouse. Out and it's there. not actually a, oh yeah, it was a seat for us. Right, right. We well, actually had a, yeah. we sat at a bench, but it's preferred viewing area. The, yeah, they they rope off different areas so people that get the fast passes get a certain area and then usually for the dining package like you said it's not typical that they have chairs set up we happen to be in an area that had benches i don't know how that worked out maybe we got there early enough i don't know but still it was great not to have to fight those crowds right those crowds at world of color are insane so i think it's worth it you're gonna eat anyway yeah you gotta eat so i guess i don't understand why they had to change how it used to be because whenever we went in march all we had to do was get an appetizer and an entree, and so we had all the options. And it actually that was one of our favorite meals. They're doing this so people will spend more. Uh, Probably. Hmm. Guess demand. I don't know. I'm making this up. I don't know. 
Oh, they had a thing at, they have a, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh, my. So Craig's turning into Charles Nelson Riley. Are you, <laughs> he is. Are, are you trying to scare Dustin's cat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I have matured. They're always tweaking these things. They're trying to make, get the most yeah. out of it, get the most money out of it, but. The fixed menu probably works better for them because then they to flip that table, right? And this is uh, this reminds me of the um, the Christmas time one at Epcot, uh, the, the, the candlelight processional, right? That it's very similar to that, right? You don't have a full menu for those. That's prefixed. Right? Well, you get no, well, you no. get a full no, menu, you, but you get a choice of one appetizer, oh, okay. one entree. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And a dessert, I believe. And the wings aren't included in that. I don't think I heard oh. you say the wings. The firecracker wings? Yeah. Oh, they not, at least they're not on the list that's on our website, mm. but I don't know for sure. have to order those a la carte. Well, yeah, they're worth you're, it. You're missing out on the biscuits, too. <laughs> With the filled biscuits? With the <laughs> I apologize if I offended anyone about the pound cake. Uh, I haven't had the pound cake. Are people writing you that the pound cake's great? I love the pound cake. It's the best pound cake ever. It's not cheap. <laughs> pound cake's $1.89 in public. I can make it for you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Kevin. Uh, Sean, rapid fire. All right. So uh, the 50th anniversary for uh, Tiki Room was last month. And out in Disneyland, they had special um, anniversary merchandise. Um, Some of it's by Shag. Some of it's by Kevin Kidney and Joey Daly. Right. Um, But at first, it was just out there in Disneyland. And now they've brought it over here. So you can get it at pretty much every Art of Disney store. Um, So I got it at Magic Kingdom at the cinema, which isn't technically Art of Disney, but very similar. Yeah. Um, But yeah, they have mugs, prints. Coasters, postcards, all that kind of stuff. Is anything limited, or is this just? The I think open? it's all open edition. Yeah. So I mean, it's good. I'm, I'm glad though because I wanted well, to buy it. And, yeah. So, but, but they have a cool. Um, in addition to the tiki room stuff, they actually have like a uh, a Polynesian village bowl that Kevin Kidney and Jody Daly did. Um, that they kind of tied into this tiki room anniversary, but it's not technically t- technically tiki room. So it's but about it's, the Polynesian village resort. Is that what you're... Kind of, yeah, it's called the Luau Bowl, and it actually okay. has the old uh, Walt Disney World D on the bottom of it with the old Polynesian village um, little tiki guy with the hands. Oh. So, How is the yeah. Kevin and Jody stuff? What is it? Oh, it's awesome. They did that bowl. Um, they did the two mugs in the picture. Um, they did the Pele and the... Uh, is it Uti? It's Tangaroa Ru. Okay. Of course. Um, but then they also <laughs> <laughs> they also have statues and uh, other stuff. So they have the Tangaroa Ru statue, the Pele statue or Pele. Um, they have the th- Rongo Bull Tangaroa Ru cup yeah. and a Pele cup as well. Sorry, I think you're just saying things. He's just yeah. I think you're saying <laughs> just, just throwing some words. Some words. And we have a we have a no. link that we can put up that has a list of all the yep. items, right? Yeah. Of course. Okay. Okay, Craig's in a mood today. He's excited. He, he loves links. <laughs> <laughs> not not uh, hyperlinks. He likes to ride the bus. Yeah, <laughs> it's a links. That's a Florida joke. I think he's just happy that he has the whole nook to himself. I think so yeah. too. It is. It's he's very rolling spacious. around back there, flailing. <laughs> yeah, I am. Sit wide, Craig. <laughs> you should put the dashiki on. But that's for later. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Sean. Mm-hmm. Corey. Um, I was going to talk about rehabs, but instead I wanted to uh, talk about the um, the refrigerators. Uh, I thought that'd be a news story. Um, due okay. to a possible defect in some of the refrigerators, um, well, in the refrigerators, some of the guest rooms at Walt Disney World, Disneyland, and Alani um, have been removed or temporarily disconnected um, until the issue is resolved. This can be expected to take up until four months. A guest staying at these hotels will be notified of the refrigerator removal via a letter in their room. Currently, the schedule for replacing the refrigerators at the resort is expected to last several months. I was pretty worried that we checked into uh, the Contemporary this past Friday and right. that we were going to walk in there with no refrigerator. We had a refrigerator in there. Wow. Um, I just... Did you sleep with one eye open? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the issue is, what the defect is, but you know, this is pretty... You know, There are a lot of people pretty upset about this you know we we use we use them all the time for the kids to keep their milk cold and stuff like that i mean you can use ice buckets for certain things but you can't put a gallon of milk in an ice bucket um they will give you a refrigerator if you have special needs um they're also limited to they only have a few of those on property so you might not get one right yep it's this is uh this is a big deal we're getting a lot of uh, questions from our dreams and limited travel clients about it and it's on the boards as well it's a concern for people 
something that people have come to expect to use in a room. I hope so. it was nothing dangerous. You know, I hope it was just like the refrigerators didn't work. Well, that's pretty much. Or they caught on fire or something. Worked. Yeah, spontaneous combustion. <laughs> Someone on the board said they got cold. That's why they had to remove them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one's actually chilly. Uh, <laughs> take it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I apologize. But I, I do want to say this does, yeah. this does not affect the Disney Vacation Club rooms or the cabins at Fort Wilderness. This is just all the other um, resorts. Okay. Excellent. Very good. Thank you, Corey. Mr. Craig. Craig T. Williams. Okay. Before I go on with that, uh, Nikki Bell just texted me, and she has a um, a blog coming up on the Tiki Room merchandise. So, in case anyone was stressed out about that, like I was, it is coming. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> That's rough, man. If you need to go lie down. You take a What's few going on in your life that this stressed you out? I just need to sleep real yeah. bad. But um, mine is that the long lost friends are a little less lost. They're returning to Magic Kingdom again this week. I like that, Sean. That's real good. Um, the first time around, they had Robin Ross. Hood characters and they had um, Clarabelle Cow, Horace Horse Caller. Professor Von Drake, like all those ones. Um, and then this time around, it's going to be the Robin Hood characters once again uh, with Chicken Little and Abby Mallard. And Solar then. Characters. Abby Mallard? Abby Mallard, yeah. That was Joan Cusack, her character. Oh, that was from Chicken Little. Yeah. Okay. Four I don't. And then also, um, it's going to be Br'er Fox, Br'er Bear, and Br'er Rabbit. Uh, the mm. cool thing about this one, at least they did it with. Um, you, you had to go online and vote for who you wanted to see. So at least people got to choose this time. I don't know who chose Chicken Little and Abby Mallard. But to fit in with that other cast. Is is this going to be at like a, ver- a specified area? In- it happens right in Town Square. So okay. they all come out. Just morning only, and yeah, because work. I didn't know this was like an official thing. I just thought in the mornings at Town Square they just always had like every character they could get their hands on just filled Town Square on a normal basis. Yeah, it's no, a, no, that was well, like it used to be though. That was mid nineties. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, now it's like Daisy Duck and I'm disappointed because I thought it was going to be the characters from Lost, <laughs> like Claire, the smoke Lost. monster. I, I was thinking the of Russ and Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> well, friends, characters. We'll talk about Lost, Lost in friends. the Alani segment. Gotcha. Right. Will we? Yeah. Will we? Yeah, we will. Yeah. A little okay. bit about little the bit. smoke monster. Oh, Maybe. good. Oh, you I'm just not. gave it all away. Sorry. Yeah. Come on, Craig. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Craig. Come on, Craig. Come on, Craig. Come on, Craig. Get on your game. I have, uh, I have a rapid fire. Uh, I had two, but Corey just stole mine. Oh, uh, did so, I? You want yeah. rehabs? Yeah. So the refrigerators are not going to be there anymore for a little while. Uh, but just a, a, a quick uh, thing is uh, Captain Jack's restaurant uh, at Downtown Disney is going to be uh, closing. I'm, it doesn't say if it's permanent. Or, or not, I would imagine this it would have to be. This is not a loss. I, I think it is. Say, yeah. Please yeah. let it be more. Um, yeah. Hold <laughs> upset. Raise your hand. But it seems they're making way for uh, more room for the Disney Springs construction. So, again, I would assume if they're constructing something new, then this is more than likely a, a permanent closure. I have never even walked down that ramp to Captain Jack's. That was one thing I've never done. Did you ever go past it to ride the boats? Yeah, I've done that. Yeah, that's pretty much as close as we get. Yeah. Just We've there. actually eaten there twice. Well, now you After can't do a, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> now you can't do a review of it. Too bad. But I'm excited about Disney Springs. So get I love downtown started. Disney. So I can't wait for anything they do new. Right? Yeah. Get it started. Get that whole process started. I am. I am fine with that. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for rapid fire with everybody. We do have a an interesting. Uh, Closing segment we want to do before we wrap up. Yeah, um, Sean, you want to want to describe that? Sure. Yeah. For us? So, uh, b- like an hour before the show, we didn't have a closing thing. So, <laughs> we created this, and I think it's going to be fun. <laughs> Thanks for pull back the ruin- <laughs> Yeah, ruining the magic. No, actually, we spent a lot of time on it though. Um, an hour. <laughs> a full hour. <laughs> Forty-seven. Most minutes. of that was designing an Excel spreadsheet. So, um, <laughs> we're actually going to take all the table service restaurants in Epcot, and then do kind of like a tournament bracket. So put two against each other, then decide on one, and then do that however many times, and then move on, and then have them compete against each other until we get to the best table service restaurant in in Epcot. Epcot. And and the the brackets, the opening brackets are going to be 
randomly decided. It's yeah, not random. like so the we, number one seed versus the 16 We seed. took the 16 and put them in a randomizer and just I list, put them in a list. And so we didn't choose And how do we who, decide? Is this like ultimate fighting championship? I, I think we're just going to come yeah, to a paper, paper rock. We yell at each other like until we decide. Match. So what's our first matchup? We, we have to go match. through the menu items. Of every no, place. no, no, not that detail. <laughs> yeah, we'll read Do, off the menu. It doesn't need to be a full segment. <laughs> um, so the first two that we have to decide is San Angel Inn and Rose and Crown, which is the better restaurant between the two. Uh, Rose and Crown. Rose, Rose and Crown. Crown. I think we all agree, yeah. Rose and Crown. All right, so then Via Napoli and then Coral Reef. Via yeah. Napoli. Yeah. All right. Oh, God. Tepanito and Akershis. Tepanito. 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 I have not eaten at the new version of it, so I can't. Unless you wanted to see princesses. Yeah. Goldfish and vinegar. Or reindeer meat. Yeah, I've never eaten at Acker's Shoes, but I like Tepanito. Are we supposed to be debating this? Or are we just you can I, I, if you want. Let's I, draw it out a little longer, yeah. <laughs> I think if we come to disagree, we're done in two minutes. Do you know how long it took me to put the spreadsheet together? <laughs> well, we have the second round coming up, of course. But I think these are the more obvious ones. These are kind of good. obvious. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. But I like Acker's Shoes. Oh, Craig's oh, okay. a defector. I'll put a star, Craig, on the side. <laughs> For the princesses. All right, Tudo Italia and Tokyo Dining. Tudo Italia. Tudo Italia. It's a, that, I mean, that's, that's a tougher close. one. Yeah, I've never been to Tudo yet. I haven't either. So well, I we went to Tokyo I've Dining this past to Tokyo uh, Dining. this past week, and we I enjoyed it, but I've never Tokyo been to Tudo, Dining. so it's tough to say. So, so we're Tokyo. Say Tokyo Dining. Yeah, Tudo Italia. I've been to several times. I apologize. Is it strictly fine. for the sushi? Is that why you're saying it, or is I've never I eaten Tudo the Italia? There. I like Italian food. I love the view up there. That's a great view. Yeah, especially if you have a window seat, and they serve your food in a monorail. They do. They do. If you're a kid, and get side or Sean. Yeah. Looks like we're torn on this one. What do well, you think, Craig? I like Tokyo Dining. Ooh. Oh, yeah, we are actually torn. Now it's three against three. Come on, Chatterati. Yeah, I think, yes. we, should, I think yeah, we should just paper, break. rock, scissors All this right. one. All right. You have to tell us what you like. What you the like first playing. person who agrees with me wins. No one's answering. I have secret prizes. Is chat, is chat locked up? Well, we can... Um, Let's go with Tepanito. Uh, Tokyo Dining? Tokyo, Tokyo Dining. Tokyo Dining. Okay. We, we fail. Sorry, Tudo. All right, Garden Grill and Monsieur, Monsieur Paul. Monsieur oh, Paul. Monsieur Paul. Oh, yeah. But I like eating in a circle. And spinning. Oh, that makes me sick, actually. <laughs> it, it is a little Yeah. Weird. I can't eat at that restaurant. Garden Grill at the land. All right, Nine yeah. Dragons and Restaurant Marrakesh. I liked Nine Dragons. I think I'm the only person on Earth who I've does. never been to Marrakesh. I've never been to I don't care for either one of them, but if I had to choose, I would take Chinese food over Moroccan food. Yeah. Over beef donuts. Yeah. All right, so Nine Dragons? I, w- I would. Okay, Beer Garden and Le Cellier. We'll sell we'll sell yeah. For sure. Uh, La Hacienda and Chefs de France. Chefs, Chefs, Chefs de, France, de France, but La Hacienda is good. La Hacienda yeah. is good. Why couldn't La Hacienda be They have an avocado uh, margarita else. that's really good. Oh, they have the margarita lady that comes out and explains all the margaritas to you. I think it's like. I really enjoy favorite. Hacienda. It's good. All but right. They Chatterati disagree and they think they Re- say, uh, Marrakesh is better than. Oh. Well, that I, one's not really up for debate. We chose. Yeah, 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 yeah. we kind of. <laughs> We'll ask you when we need you. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I sit back quietly. All right. Let's move on. To, that's the end of round one, right? Yeah, that's round one. Okay. Is this like a multi-week thing? No, it's a multi-minute thing. Oh, so we'll yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's only going to be like We're not two done. No. no, no, no. That was just round one. It's now, only been three minutes. And now we, since we started. These are the harder longer. decisions. Yeah. You know, it's just like a sporting bracket. You know. Yeah. Oh, thanks for explaining that. <laughs> explain sports. <laughs> hockey, <laughs> hockey, <laughs> hockey, <laughs> tennis. It's like Project football. Runway. Do you want Golf. me to explain the voting thing on the Academy Awards? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, all right. So this is round two. Okay. The first one is Rose and Crown versus Via Napoli. I Via say Via Napoli. Via Napoli. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That was easy. So Tepanito and Tokyo Dining. No, gosh, I don't know. It's like Monster uh, versus Godzilla. How do you can, how can you choose? <laughs> <laughs> you okay, over there? Are you breathing over there? There's I've way not too been many to kai- Tokyo Dining. Way too many kaiju references. I would say nope. Tokyo okay. Dining, I think. But I like hibachi. Yeah. yeah, I do too. It's I've never been to that one. I'm just going to say Tokyo Dining. Tokyo okay, Dining. Tokyo okay, Dining. Okay, okay, that. We're okay with that. So Monsieur Paul versus Nine Dragons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Monsieur Paul. Uh, and then the last one is... Chefs de France versus Le Cellier. Uh, I like Chefs de France. Yeah, Chefs de France. Yeah, I've okay. My experiences have been better there. I've only ever had lunch at uh, Chefs de France, but it's a nice experience. But Le Cellier just seems fancier. Le darker. Cellier, the last time we ate there wasn't very good. Yeah. And talk about a view. <coughs> right. Chefs well, de France is all windows. Right. All right. Chefs de France. All right. So that's round two. I'm just so this is going quickly. Yeah. All right, so we're almost done. Via Napoli versus Tokyo <laughs> Dining. Via Napoli. Via Napoli. Surprised that's so high. All right, and then 
Monsieur Paul versus Chefs de France. Monsieur, Monsieur Paul. Paul. Yeah. All right. So that brings us to Vianapoli <laughs> versus Monsieur Paul. I didn't know yeah. that would be our final is Vianapoli versus... It's going to be Monsieur, Monsieur Paul. Monsieur Paul. I'm sure yeah. I've never eaten there, but... Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that was that was good. I'm pretty sure you could have guessed that's the... That Monsieur Paul is the best restaurant in Vianapoli is very popular. Yeah. We, we were just walking around Epcot just looking for a place to walk up to, and and that was just... The Chatterati disagree with us, but I'm guessing All right, let's see what that's because a lot of people haven't tried Monsieur Paul. Right. right. Send in your fantasy brackets to... I don't know. Dustin will read them. <laughs> and I'll read them out While loud. While he talks to show. his cat. Oh. That makes Sorry. me sad. I do talk to the cat. I didn't cool. mean to hurt your feelings. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. I, I enjoy. We might have to structure it a little different, but maybe we can, uh, if we For have the any... first go around, it was... It would also be nice if we had the visual. Oh, somebody's got their sound on. No, oh, that's me. Sorry. <laughs> Weird. If we could have the visual up, that would be great, too, if you can actually have it yeah. and show slides of the... Yeah, as we do it, that would be. I cool. didn't have that much time. You had an hour. No, I, that was Excel time. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we could show my computer. I'm sure. Like, yeah, the, bracket. The, yeah. the guys who. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh wow. Wow. Very cool. Very it's art. Well, thanks for showing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Geeky Fine. about us. <laughs> okay. Well, that was cool. Uh, Monsieur Paul, I think, was hands down. Wait, somebody's knocking at the door. Okay. Um, somebody's ringing the bell. But uh, let's see. That's uh, okay. That is that is going to do it for our show. Uh, thank you, everybody, for everything you brought to the table, and we hope you folks at, at home enjoyed it. Make sure you stick around for our Alani Beyond the Parks segment. And again, we are going to be giving away a cool prize, so stick around for that. And uh, until next time, have a great week, everybody. 